Today in the workshop, I have a box of E20 R Meccano parts. Let's find out how to turn that into this. So today we're looking at the Meccano E20 R motor. I've never seen one of these before. But as a kid growing up, playing with Meccano quite a lot, it gave me many, many, many hours of great pleasure, and still does. So I decided to buy this box of uh, broken bits and pieces off of eBay. It was listed as a uh, not working motor. Don't know much about this one. I didn't have this as a kid. I had more modern day version. But there's lots of information online on this E20 or electric 20 volt reversing motor. It seemed to be produced from the 1950s onwards. And I'm glad to say there's lots of pictures online to give me a clue of how to put this thing back together again. So let's first have a clean up of all the parts we have got. I'm not sure whether there's any parts missing at this point. I personally prefer to uh, clean components up before the investigation phase, testing phase. Let's start with the actual rotor itself. I'm going to clean the commutator up, but uh, not too much, and clean the gap in between the segments to make sure electrically there's no short circuit. Now time to prove the motor winding connections. First I want to just check between each of the uh, coil segments and the, the ground, the shaft. So I've got it on mega ohms and I'm just checking each segment or each winding. We've got about 3.8 mega ohms or more on each segment so I'm happy with that. Now next we move on to the low ohm rating. Um, I haven't zeroed the meter, I just want to do a comparison of resistance between each segment to make sure they're pretty much in balance. So it's not an absolute figure but we've got 2.8 ish ohms between each segment. They all look pretty much in balance so that's uh, a positive, it's all good there. Okay, it's time to turn the attention to the stator electrical element part, and that's the coil on the uh, stator fork itself. A quick investigation of that reveals that both the uh, end connections are broken off. So to get to the end of the winding, I have to remove the entire coil wire. I want to reuse this bit of wire again, so I'm going to wind it onto this piece of wood temporarily and then refeed the end back through the starting point of the uh, winding and start to very carefully lap each of the wires around carefully making sure they touch each other after about 10 minutes of that i got utterly bored with that and decided to wind the coil back on fairly randomly but nice and tight in case I chipped any of the insulating lacquer off of the wire when I was winding it on and off, I then completely soaked the winding in printed circuit board lacquer and used a hot air gun to seal and bond it again. Then I applied some normal PVC tape to it. Now we move on to the electrical testing to make sure the winding is all good and it's not down to earth. So first we want to strip off some of the lacquer on the end of the connections so we make a good electrical connection for testing. With the meter connected we have 2.48 ohms for that wire. Now I want to check that there's no short circuit between the coil wire and the actual laminated core itself. There's no short circuits, so get on a uninsulated bit. That's all good. Now we turn the tension to the on, off and changeover switch combination. First we carefully take this apart, 
putting the parts in order in case I forget how they went back together again. Removing this brass selector switch reveals the electrical connections below. We have some little spring loaded posts that with a combination of the connection on the selector switch will allow you to either switch the motor off or run the motor forward or reverse. So I decided to clean up all the electrical contact points. Give the front of it a little clean up as well, not too much. And reassemble. Right, having mapped out where the electrical connection points should be and what the connection should be for each position, then connect the multimeter up again and just check that every connection point is good. And I'm glad to say that we have a good low resistance between the connections when we should have it. Now each of the separate components has been dealt with, it's time to start some assembly. For this, I'm going to refer to the photographs I downloaded from the internet earlier to find out what's the order and the uh, orientation of each component and start the reassembly work. So I'm just greasing up the shaft of the rotor at the moment. The bearings on this aren't modern day mechanical bearings, they are bushes. So I just want to give that a little bit of uh, lubrication before we start. One thing I did notice when I was uh, reassembling this motor was that the Majority of the nuts and bolts and threads were BA, British Association sizes. It's time now to do a fit of the stator and put the other side panel on and make any necessary adjustments to make sure we have got a good clearance and even clearance between the rotor and the stator. I think the trickiest part of this job is probably the electrical connections to make sure they're all correct with the operation of the changeover switch. I'm just going to put some sleeving on these uh, wires coming from the stator coil. And these are the main posts on the changeover switch for the connection of the main supply. As the little switches on the back of the changeover, the little pickups are spring loaded. They rely on a combination of uh, two nuts to hold any electrical wires and connection points firmly, but still allow the spring to operate correctly. So time to drill down on the drawings and the pictures to try and find out where each of these connections goes. So I'm happy with that, it's time to do a little bit of soldering. To use the original, I wouldn't say crimps, but the original soldered connections to reuse the original parts as much as possible. So that's it, that's the majority of the reassembly complete leaves us one more job to do and that is the brush gear. You can still buy the genuine brushes from a supplier but they are in quite a long lead time so I'm just modifying some existing brushes I have and trying these out first. So I just need to shape them accordingly. I'm just using the drill here to uh, bed in the brushes. I'm hoping there's enough residual magnetism within this circuit to check each direction. We've got minus 30 millivolts DC 
one direction and should have plus 30 in the opposite direction, which we have. So, all good. Time to bring in the bench power supply and give the motor its first test run. I'm just going to bring in the thermal camera to check what the running temperature is with the uh, windings and on the brush gear. And everything looks pretty good. Now for a little bit of fun, we're going to load up the motor. In fact, we're going to overload it probably to about 200%. Um, and I'm going to run this uh, steam beam engine of mine. If you found this video of interest, if you did, please check out some others and consider subscribing to the channel.